What's up, man? What's up, buddy? How are you? Good. How are you? I'm awesome, man. Good to see you, man. Long time. Yeah, good to talk to you again. How's everything? Are you, you you left New York? I'm in New York. Oh, you're in New York. I saw your number. Yeah. I was like, oh, did he leave New York? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm in Manhattan. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah I, I live in Manhattan, too, so. Cool, cool, cool. How you been? How, everything's good, man. You know, it's been a while. Things have, have certainly picked up with the site, you know, since I, I spoke to you originally. You know, I was glad for your, you know, you were an early supporter of us. You, like I said, you brought me to the studio. That was a cool experience. Hey, man. Appreciate pleasure, that. Man. You're good people, man. You're good people. I like your spirit, so no worries. Appreciate Absolutely. that. Thank yeah. you. So, um, I and, and obviously, thank you for taking the time for this interview, man. I appreciate it. I love yeah, to yeah. share your, your history and your story. Yeah. Um, you know, and anyone who doesn't make it in for the live, this will definitely be up on our website. It'll be on our YouTube and everywhere so they can check it out. Okay. And, cool. um, I certainly want to touch on, like, we love to share the history and the story. So we'll start, yeah, you know, kind yeah. of back in the day and then bring sure. it up to date. Absolutely, man. Ask away, cool. man. Ask me anything you want to know. Give me a second. I want to check my connection. It looks a little choppy on my end. I want to make sure we have a good connection. Okay, no problem. Do you see me clearly? I do very well. Okay. All right. I think we're good. So, Mark, let's let's take it back. I want to start at the beginning. Um, obviously, we all know the story, you know, with Boys to Men. You were part of that originally. But just share your memories. What do you remember about Philadelphia School of the Performing Arts, you know, being being around that time of, you know, what eventually became Boys to Men? What was it like just being a young, a young man, becoming an artist? Uh, so, yeah, um, Korean Performing Arts High School, I have to say uh, – uh, shape and molded my creative energy, my spirit. Um, I walked in real shy, <laughs> like really, really, really shy, right? But, you know, it's interesting. Shyness, I think, is just, uh, you know, like there's this person on the inside who's just waiting to scream and come out and say, hey, look at me, I am somebody, right? Yeah. Performing Arts High School pulled that out of me because, um I can literally say it was like the, the movie and TV show Fame, you know, that we know of with Debbie Allen and so forth, uh, with Janet Jackson. Um, and I, and uh, it really set the tone, um, excuse me, for me to, uh, you know, do what I've done today. Um, but yeah, it, it was a great experience. Um, you know, over the course of the years, the one thing I loved about the school was that you had, you had uh, students um, from all over, the, you know, the city, whether it be the hood, whether it be bougie land, <laughs> whether it be rich, yeah. middle class, everyone came to one central location, different colors, uh, cultures, and so forth for one common reason, that was to be creative, and I loved it. Nice. Yeah. I don't think I ever heard the story of how you originally got your solo deal. I mean, obviously, I know you were part of Boys to Men originally, but how? Yeah. Once you broke off, how did you land your deal? So, the funny thing is, is that um, I didn't really break off, but in saying that, I'll get to that at some point. Yeah. Um, when the Boys to Men deal went down without me, um, okay. there was another deal on the table before that that I actually conjured up because. Um, this label that I signed to was interested in me as a soloist, but I had brought mm. the Boys to Men project to them and they turned it down. Wow. And so, yeah, and so when, uh, when the situation with Boys to Men took place, it sort of left me with no other option but to go ahead and, uh, and take, that, take that deal. Yeah. And so that was, with, that was with Capitol Records, by the way. Gotcha. So what, yeah. what, what, what led to that moment, though, of, I mean, when we look back at artists being signed, it, you know, mm -hmm. it's hard to imagine even, you know, getting discovered because it's so hard. You know, it, it's not easy. So many artists are out here trying to get signed. You know, yeah. what, what led to you getting signed? Did you meet the right people? Like, how did that work? Well, you know, uh, I, I'd say, you know, performance at that time and not even realizing it was a place for sort of like a cattle call for talent. And I didn't realize that they were reps like, you know, sportsmen looking for, uh, you know, uh, excuse me, uh, agents, you know, looking for sportsmen in high schools or colleges. You know, there were people there basically scouting, scouting wow. talent. Yeah. And um, and so I was approached. And as I said, you know, I was looking to do one thing, but then, you know, I had to do another. So. 
Gotcha. Yeah. Can you share the story of, um, you know, what boys to men, we, we all know that, um, you know, Michael Bivens found the group and got involved. Were you around at the time when that all went down? Like, you know how that went down? Yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> not only was I around, um, I was basically very instrumental with Nate uh, to get the group uh, mm. discovered. Um, and so a lot of times, you know, uh, you know, you'll hear people say, oh, you know, you know, you left the group, you left the group, you left the group, you left the group. Clearly that wasn't the case. Um, you know, there was this uh, performing arts, uh, excuse me, there was this concert that took place. I was instrumental in getting everybody backstage and then in meeting Michael Bivens, like you see on the new edition movie. Excuse yeah. me, sorry, buddy. Um, like what you see on the new edition, <laughs> on the new edition movie. Yeah. And then um, uh, one thing led to another. One of the biggest problems that, we, that I was facing was me and the guys were signed to a local management. And I had signed to that management at an early, uh, at, a, uh, at 18 years old. So I was considered an adult. The others were minors, 17 and under. And the manager wasn't trying to let me go. And that began the discrepancy of me not being able to join uh, my guys, you know, along the Boys to Men journey. Gotcha. Uh, I like to give a disclaimer always, you know, when I tell this story, I'll go into major detail with the book that I'm writing currently called nice. As a Boy, Yet a Man. As a Boy, Yet a Man, coming out next summer. Awesome. Love it. Yeah, yeah. You know, the, the coolest thing about the story is like a lot of people didn't know through the years what happened, but you know, regardless, there, there was never any hard feelings and you've performed with them. You've remained cool with them at times. Yeah. And I even bumped into you at a boys to men show here in New York. So, I mean, I always thought that was cool that you were still around the group, even though you weren't officially part of it. Yeah, no, I appreciate it, man. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say it was, uh, you know, peaches and cream and, and roses <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> by no stretch of the imagination, but you know, my my philosophy at that time, even being as young as I was, was to not run away from tragedy, drama, an issue of some sort. I faced the music. And so, yeah, I mean, many tears, you know, a lot of hurt. It was very traumatizing. I, I'm not going to sugarcoat that at all. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I always believed that God had a purpose and a plan for me like he has for everyone. And I, what was I going to do, just roll over and, and, yeah. and die? Or was I going to, you know, move forward and make something happen? So um, I can say I really am grateful to the Lord that he's allowed me to have a very beautiful, amazing, adventurous career, regardless of whether or not I did it with boys to men. And I always say that their success is my own. So it's all love. It'll definitely be interesting to read more about that in your book when it comes out next year. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> so let's talk about your solo career a bit now, because mm -hmm. even though it didn't work out, you know, you couldn't remain in Boys to Men, you still mm -hmm. carved out your own lane and, and made a very successful solo career, which is amazing yes. to see. Um, thank you. Take us back to your debut album, I Want You. I think it was in 91. What do you remember about creating that album? So uh, I Want You. I love the song, but I'm going to say I love the song so much more today mm. than when I did it when I was 19 years old. And it's because the company that I had signed to to be on Capitol Records, they basically felt that I could, you know, I just, I guess you say, carry the mantle of, you know, re reincarnating Marvin Gaye. Yeah. But I was so young. And again, I didn't even want to be a solo artist. I wanted to be in my group, Voice to Men. So uh, I really didn't like the idea that I was going to be covering this record, you know, and I appreciate a lot of people say, you know, I did a good job and, and it did okay. I mean, it didn't really make the greatest noise, but um, I didn't want to do that record. I didn't even want to do the CD. So it, wow. was a, it was a true challenge for me because, again, um, just being completely somewhere else mentally as a youngin all I could see was what, you know, what I didn't get to be a part of. And so, um, now don't get me wrong, I'm grateful that, you know, no matter what, you know, I always say my, my talent carried, carried me throughout the years. So I was very blessed to even have an opportunity in spite of not uh, being with Boyz II Men, but it, the road was not pretty at all. It, it, was, it was horrible, as a matter wow. of fact. Yeah, it really, really was, but you know, 
again, I always say to people, <clears throat> I always feel like if I didn't learn the hardcore lessons, then I would not have appreciated over the years enjoying every moment that I was on stage. Yeah. You know, every moment I got to meet a new artist that I was either writing for, producing for, singing with, or singing behind. Um, so the beginning being hard for me really made me appreciate the success Yeah. when it finally came to me. You know what I mean? So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Wow. Makes a lot of sense. And I'm glad you yeah. were able to, you know, enjoy some of that success as it came later. Oh, yeah. You know. One successful aspect of your career, though, that doesn't get celebrated enough is your songwriting. Yeah. And I know after your debut album, you took some time and started doing songwriting for other artists. Yeah. You know, a bunch of big names and made some, some great songs. I mean, talk about that time in your life when you kind of stepped away from being an artist yourself and kind of did songwriting behind the scenes. Well, this is a, this is a good one. I appreciate the question. Uh, so the irony is that the song I Want You was written by um, was written by um, Leon Ware. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Leon Ware, uh, I think he's passed, may he rest in peace, was married to a woman named Carol Ware. Carol Ware was the president of the division for my publishing company as a songwriter. Wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right? So when she realized that uh, I had moved to Los Angeles from New York, mm -hmm. she called me and this, I'm getting, I'm like 20 years old, something like that. And she calls yeah. me and she says, hi, Mark, um, I hear you're in LA. Why don't you come down to the office? And I'm like, who are you? She was like, well, I'm your publisher. What is publishing? <laughs> <laughs> wow. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, and she said, just come on down. I'll, I'll teach you. So I went to her office and that began, that began my awareness of what songwriting was, publishing was, copywriting was. And they provided a studio at mm -hmm. the uh, MCA, it was called MCA at the time, now University of Music Publishing. They provided a recording studio that you could just go in, just schedule an appointment, yeah. and I, you could just go anytime you want. So I began to develop my writing skills there. And um, 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 there's a, a woman, I have to give her major praise. Her name is Sherry. Sherry, uh, is it Orson? Sherry Orson. I want to say Sherry Orson. If it wasn't for her, I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't even been a writer, professional writer, because <laughs> she really took me through the trenches of meeting all the different publishers and songwriters that were out there. She, she taught me the game, and then she introduced me to Pebbles. Mm. And Pebbles... Uh, real name Perry, technically gave me my first shot as a songwriter. And I wrote uh, the, the title song and a couple of others to her last CD called Straight From My Heart. I wrote a song called Straight From My Heart for her. In that, I meet L.A. Reid. Pebbles uh, had a guy named Tony Rich. Yeah. Tony Rich Project signed. Me and Tony Rich connected. And then me and Tony Rich wrote a song for Tony Braxton. Wow. The Secret CD. And then I meet a, a guy named John Robinson, incredible pro, uh, producer, and we start to write songs. John Robinson gets signed to Babyface's camp. Hmm. Babyface hears my voice, hears my style of writing, and then next thing you know, I'm on the face records as the lead singer to As Yet. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's kind of a, a little bit of a puzzle to it, yeah. And I know you had a, a credit for John B. as well, I believe. Is that yeah, uh, through the yeah. Babyface connection? Absolutely. So Tracy Edmonds, uh, Babyface's ex-wife, at the time wife, uh, had a production and label called Yab Young. Yep. And John B. was the first artist signed to it. And on his second CD, um, the one he did the record with Tupac, I wrote and produced with John Robinson his first single called Don't Say. Right. Yeah, and, uh, and so it was just kind of like, because I was signed to LaFace and I was on sort of the babyface side of that camp, I was always at Yab Young. 
and I would run into John B all the time. And one day I just said, hey, man, come, come in my car for a minute. I have this song for you, right? Yeah. <laughs> and he was sat in cars like, oh, my God, I have to have this record. I was like, cool, man, no problem. <laughs> Amazing song. Love that one. Uh, yeah, thank you. So you, you mentioned As Yet and how you kind of joined up with, with the group. I mean, tell us where your head was at at the time. Were you looking to get back out there as an artist? Were you looking to join a group? Like, where were you at? So again, I, you know, I, I sound like I'm a, a, a world of uh, these crazy stories, but <laughs> I love these stories because with, with people listening and watching, I'm hoping that it encourages, us to, encourages them to understand, man, God is amazing and things can happen in any which way. So. I signed as a solo artist to Capitol Records. I go back and perform, got booked to perform at the same venue I got Boys to Men discovered with no. Michael Bevins, okay? <laughs> so I'm in Philly performing. I leave the venue after the show and there's these group of guys outside who were waiting for me. And they were like, yo, we love you, we love what you've done, this and that, Boys to Men, blah, blah, can you come help us with our homies? This is in 91. I go and help them with their harmonies at their home, and I leave. Mm -hmm. I moved to L.A. In 95, I uh, told you I connected with John B. I mean, John Robinson, who was with Babyface. Babyface then calls me. Hey, just signed this group called As Yet Untitled, and they say they know you, and I want you <laughs> to be in a lead singer of this group. So I get there and I'm looking at it, I'm like, oh my God, it's the same guys I helped about four years later. It's unreal. Not realizing a seed was planted to be the lead singer of this group. Had no idea. Oh man, you that's epic, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's how stuff works, man. It's crazy. <laughs> talk, I mean, that, I mean <laughs> talk about your work with, with the group though. I mean, I know you mentioned your, your solo album you know, you were going through a tough time and weren't really able to appreciate that. But when you put yeah. out the As Yet project, were you yeah, okay. in better spirits? How did you feel about that? Now, let me, that okay, now this right here, this was the moment of truth because, uh, you know, <clears throat> I don't know if, if most don't believe it, but there is a thing called spiritual healing. It is very, 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 very real. Yeah. And I was devastated by not being with Boys to Men in, starting mm -hmm. in 1991. And so for the next four years, I'm, 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 I'm crushed, but I kept pressing, kept moving on. Mm. And then again, these seeds being planted. And the moment I get with As Yet, I, uh, I, I was given Babyface's address. First, I'm looking at the address like, I'm about to go to Babyface's house. <laughs> I'm about to go to Babyface's house. Hold on, hold on, yeah. hold on, hold on. I'm about to go to Babyface's house, right? And so as soon as I get into his, as soon as I pull up to his mansion in Beverly Hills and drive through the driveway, I kind of look behind, back to me, and I can see the gates closing. Mm -hmm. And that was sort of like metaphoric for the old has, has, has stopped and the new has begun. Wow. And immediate healing started to take place. Didn't oh, even wow. think boys to men anymore. You understand yeah. what I'm saying, right? And then here, baby's face is right there while I'm driving up, and I'm like, oh my god, I'm at baby's <laughs> house. <laughs> like, yeah, what the hell is going on, right? <laughs> so, uh, connecting with him, and then going into his house and sitting in the library, um, me and the guys as yet we're waiting. We're waiting for him to come and sit with us to basically kind of go over what would be the first As Yet CD. And, uh, you know, can you imagine? I'm sitting there, he's sitting in front of me, and he's going, hey, you know, I got these songs for y'all, and I just wanted to play them for you. So he, he got this little DAP machine, <laughs> and he sat it down with these little tweeter speakers. And then and as I'm sitting here, you can just imagine, he's probably only like six feet away from me looking at me. And the whole time, again, I'm just going to say it a hundred more times in this interview, oh, my God, I'm sitting here. <laughs> <in crazy place." laughs> yeah. Right? So, and then next thing you know, he pushes play, and he's, do, 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 do. And he goes, last night. And I'm like, damn, my God. Yeah. Oh, my God, that's amazing, right? So from that day, 
um, you know, I have to always say thank you to him. From that day forward, he like he kept me by his side like almost twenty four hours a day. I wow. stayed in the studio with him, uh, singing, recording, writing uh, records, you know, with him for him, and all of that. As you asked me, it was the healing of Mark Nelson, you know, mm. where I didn't. Uh, I didn't feel any pain anymore. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I didn't feel, I didn't feel unfulfilled or incomplete. I was being fulfilled, and like all those little nuances, you know, I was getting sponsored by Nike, so I had like 300 shoes in my closet <laughs> to travel all over the world. Yeah. You know, people screaming at you on stage and all that stuff. Even those things, even as those things were taking place, that Boys to Men had received four years prior to me. When I received it, the interesting thing was the suffering over the first four years, when I finally received all of this fame and fortune, it didn't mean shit to me. Nothing. Wow. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. Right? And so, and that's the part where I say I thank God because I can only imagine had I received all that fame and success with boys to men in the beginning when I was 18, I don't think I'd even be a good person to be honest with you. So, you know, I wouldn't change, I wouldn't change my journey for anybody because I mean, ultimately I always wanted to work with Kenny uh, Face. I always mm -hmm. wanted to be on the Face records. And then I circle back and I'm on stage with boys to men now for like the last eight years. So, I mean, it's just been, it's been an amazing road, bro. Yeah. It's just crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I hope we're not, <laughs> I hope we're not revealing too much from your book, Mark, but man, I no, love no, these totally stories. Fine. Yeah, it's totally fine, man. No worries. No <laughs> Thanks worries. for sharing all these stories, man. I appreciate absolutely. it. We, you know, the readers love to hear the history, so we appreciate yeah, it. Absolutely. Let, let's take it a couple years forward to your next solo album, Chocolate Mood. Now, let me tell you, I remember hearing 15 Minutes, the single um, here in New York, and I was a bit too young to, to be able to relate to the lyrics and appreciate them, but... <laughs> But man, production wise, melody wise, it was always stuck in my head. I love that song. That's um, just song. talk about how you transitioned into that album, Chocolate Mood, and and got to that point. So, um, so I was just coming off of uh, MTV Unplugged, uh, which was uh, starring Babyface, yeah, and um, Benny Medina, um, um, icon manager was managing face at the time he approached me and, and said he wanted to uh, manage me so right from dc we took a, a flight to new york and um closed the deal immediately with columbia records um and it was an amazing deal with columbia records so it allowed me to build my own recording facility and uh oh. just be you know be creative as ever so i had built it in la but then i flew to new york and that's where you and I connected. And I like yeah. just booked out this hotel for like two months, you know, and uh, brought on my gear and just got very, very creative. And what I wanted to do, I wanted to think outside the box and like what you see, what you saw, Justin Timberlake and like The Weeknd and all of them that they've done. That's the kind of CD that I was creating, right? Mm -hmm. Yet... Uh, Tony Pope from the Track Masters had just become senior VPs of um, of um, Columbia Records, and so I was introduced to them. So they came after I got signed, and they listened to my CD, and they were like, "Yo, man, it's great. It's you know, it's pop. You know, it's cool. It's cool. Yeah. It's cool." But you know, we want to put a little edge on you. You know, what I mean, we really want to kind of, uh, you know, what I'm saying. So I was like, "Okay, what you what you got?" And they said, "How about this record?" So they played 15 minutes for me. And I was like, <laughs> that's pretty fire, right? Yeah. And so all I was trying to do is just imagine how I was going to, um, how I was going to work that record out. So I went and I tweaked a little bit um, in terms of writing. And, um, and here we got 15 minutes. But when I, when I thought, okay, since I'm going to do this CD, let me go ahead and get like the whole imagery right and tight. So, Tyrese, who was my man when he was a youngin', right? Yeah. Um, he went and did his first CD that I that I produced a record on, and he went into the gym and came out all cut and swollen <laughs> shit. I was like, Reese, 
yo, who is your trainer? So I hired his trainer to train me for like seven months straight, right? Yeah. And uh, and that's where the whole concept of being all swollen yoke you know, <laughs> in, the, in the music video for the 15 minutes, I thought it would be, you know, appropriate uh, to come with that swagged out image with all the dancers and the pit bull dogs and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it was pretty cool, man. It was really cool. Was a lot of fun. Why do you think that album didn't, you know, wasn't wasn't mm -hmm. bigger than it could have been? I mean, it's a really good album, and yeah. it just didn't feel like it got the recognition it deserved. Why do you feel that was the case? Well, I appreciate that, but again, I think, um, you know, Tone and Pope, you know, they come from hip hop. You know what I'm saying? And um, in that, when I presented them like a pop record, I was thinking very global, right? And they were thinking more like, yo, we want to capture your urban audience audience first. So here, they didn't know what they could make a follow-up single because I had all these other style of records. And because they came in at the tail of me recording my CD, they threw 15 minutes on top of it. You see what I'm saying? And so in terms of a marketing campaign and strategy, the label didn't know where to go with me. But this is why they called me and said, hey, do this record with Beyonce for the Best yeah. Man soundtrack. And then I did another record. Uh, that, that record's called After All Was Said and Done. And then I had done another record for uh, Martin Lawrence's Big Mama's House, a song called Love's Not Love. And so I think they were saying, hey, we know he comes from as yet, pop all day, yeah. these big ballad records. We gave him 15 minutes, but his core is this. Let's see if we could, uh, if we could smooth it over. And then at the end of the day, you know, um, back then they were, you know, record labels had so much money, they were throwing money at anything and everything just to see if it sticks, you know. Yeah. And that was sort of like, I think that was sort of the tail end of artist development as we know it, you know. Right. Shout out to our guy, um, DJ Soul Child. He just chimed in with the comment, Love Compass should have been a single. Mm. My man, thank you, sir. <laughs> I'm glad you mentioned the Beyonce record, though, because, you know, I find it interesting. You know, it's almost like you have bragging rights, because when you look at who Beyonce is now, and you were able to get a duet with her, n not many people have had a duet with Beyonce. Is that like <laughs> a bragging rights situation for you? Uh... <laughs> in a funny way. I mean, in a funny way. No, not... no, no, no. I know. No, what I'm thinking is, um, you know, I'm, I'm gonna kill my ego right now <laughs> <laughs> because I was about to say actually it was bragging rights for her because I was oh. I was bigger than she was. No, <laughs> no. I mean that's fair. That's no, fair. Queen, that's no, fair. No, I'm just kidding. Queen B definitely at the time Beyonce she was just coming from Destiny's yeah, Child, yeah. right? I'm totally joking with what I just said, but uh, <laughs> no, seriously. So, you know, who knew Beyonce was going to be Queen B when we did our, you know, yeah. our, our our duet? It was her first. It was my first, and it was it was incredible to do, you know. And um, yeah, and it's interesting too because right in the middle of that, uh, I parted ways with uh, Benny Medina, and Matthew Knowles was uh, courting to be my manager. Uh, at that time and mm. we were planning on doing like a music video for that song and just kind of blow it up bigger but uh, because Beyonce took off like ridiculously he, you know he just didn't have any time for it gotcha interesting mm -hmm. stuff yeah so following um Chocolate Mood album I know you had a independent album many years later but where did things take you directly after that album say it one more time where did the journey take you after the Chocolate Mood album? I know you had an independent album years later, but you know, yeah, directly yeah. after Chocolate Mood, where did things take you? So um, at that time, so much personally was happening um, in my life that wasn't really, really good. I lost my mom. Um, my relationship was going to the rocks. Um, and I kind of just got really, really tired uh, of everything. You know what I'm saying? I was just like, let me do something completely left to not think music. So I went to the Cordon Bleu to, to become a chef. Wow. Um, yeah, I, I took my hand in um, all kinds of little things, man. Um, but then I started to do some acting. And uh, I wasn't very good at the time. 
um, I've developed over the years. But I started doing some plays. And then, you know, this whole independent internet digital world just started coming to life. Yeah. Everybody's like, what in the world is this? And um, after I had done some things, I was like, you know what, let me just go ahead and just test the waters and throw something out there. And I, I created a Mark My Words. Gotcha. And, and, I, and I'll say for real, it was a, a true learning curve because I didn't understand anything about independence. You know what I'm saying? I was so spoiled right. uh, with, you know, being in the music industry. You know? So, yeah, I just did those things, man. And then um, right. and here we are today. <laughs> well, let me ask you about the um, about some of the stage plays you've done, because there's been a lot of artists, you know, who kind of dabbled in those things, you know, got their feet wet with acting. But I don't know if a lot of people realize what goes into it, to a stage play, producing it, being a part of one, traveling. Like, what is it even like? Well, uh, you know, my take on it, um, it is, it's very, it's very interesting, the acting world. I was so green because again, I could tell you everything about the music industry. Mm -hmm. But what I noticed is that, well, first you gotta know how to act. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the first thing. And then um, a lot of the plays I was in had singing involved. So that's really how I was able to even be hired because I could sing, right? Yeah. Um, it is a lot that goes into the production of the plays. Um, you know, I noticed, and, and, and please correct me if I'm wrong, I don't want to insult any actors, especially very professional actors, but the plays that I, were, that I was in, it was almost as if while they're kind of off season, these major actors are off season or maybe are out of work or whatever, they would go do these plays um, in the meantime. And um, so, you know, I'm on the stage with uh, Carl Payne. I'm on the stage with the, uh, was it, um, uh, Tommy um, from the Mark Lawrence show passed away, mm -hmm. um, you know. And I, le I learned a lot from them, you know. Yeah. I learned a lot from them about how to read a script, what is blocking all about, um, stage left, stage right, you know, downstage, upstage. Uh, and but it is brutal in the sense of, you know, the the for for whatever reason the acting, entertainment part of the world, they don't they don't want to share knowledge with you or information mm -hmm. with you to help you understand how this this game is played. I am not wow. suggesting this everyone, yeah. that was my experience, you know, at the time. So then I just jumped into major acting classes. And uh, and I have been doing it ever since. Now um, I'm in film school, and uh, I'm developing my own stuff. You know, for wow. uh, yeah, yeah, I'm working on my own, uh, working on my ability to create my own independent films. That's yeah. awesome. Thank I love you. that. Thank you. Before we touch on some more of the current stuff you've got going on, I got to yeah, yeah, ask yeah. about the um, the it's super cool. group you had. Uh, uh, Blaze and talk about. Blaze. I mean, it didn't get off the, off the ground. Unfortunately, we didn't get a project from it. But I know yeah. you guys have been working on some music. That would have been fun, man. I mean, talk about that. Yeah. Those times. Okay, so you know when the again when the industry was popping, J Records was like one of the hottest labels, or the last one of the hottest last labels that were out there. And um, uh, a publisher named uh, Rich Christina was senior VP to uh, Sony ATV, which is now my publisher. And he signed me to that publishing company. And the reason why he signed me is because uh, me and a guy named Tony Grant, um, you know, Tony came up with this idea. Hey, let's put together this super group with Blackstreet, Ajet, and Silk, the lead singer. And I was like, <laughs> damn, that's crazy, right? Yeah. So I said, man, let me call you right back. I sat there and I thought I said BL for Black Street, A Y for As Yet. And then I said uh, S for Silk and put an E at the end, Blaze. Okay. I called Rich Christina. Rich, I have a crazy idea. Let's do it. Did a deal, got a major budget, and I took us into the studio to work with uh, various fire producers uh, at that time. Uh, one of the main uh, team was uh, the Trackmasters, 
and um, and and a, I think they call it Star Stargate, right? Yeah, Stargate. Um, yeah, and um, yeah, it came with heat. And again, this was that uh, my was it MySpace? Yeah, MySpace. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> this is how long ago that was, right? And um, and it, it was all about putting out the music and and seeing the numbers go crazy before a label would be yeah. interested in you. Okay. And so a manager approached the group, Tom Fay. And we went to, and he took us to uh, J Records, and we were about to sign this dope deal. Mm -hmm. And then one of the members, I'm not even going to tell you who it is, and it wasn't me, right? Um, just killed the whole thing for us. Oh. It was, it was, it was ridiculous. Oh, yeah, my man, DJ Soul Chop. Yo, what am I supposed to do? Oh, I'm with you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Anyway. Yeah, and again, you know, um, oh, I'm sorry. You know, we was also in with Shep, Shep Crawford. Shep Crawford oh, yeah. did an amazing record for us. So, I mean, yeah, so, you know, again, it's just one of those things, groups and, you know, different personalities. But he he uh, he uh, he definitely messed that up for us. What are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hopefully we can hear some of those records someday. I, I miss those MySpace, uh, you know, shares but yeah maybe yeah, someday. yeah yeah as a matter of fact um i'm well yeah you say we'll, we'll talk later about what i'm doing presently but i will be re-releasing a lot of a uh, lot of records well yeah let, let's let's take it up to date a bit i mean you had no the problem. song a few years ago wishing you the worst i believe was the single yeah. mm -hmm. we didn't know if an album was going to follow that an album didn't follow that unfortunately but yeah. talk about i guess more recently some of the things you've been working on yeah thank you um you know May he rest in peace. There was a there was a kid named K two K two a young young man, um, <coughs> excuse me, who man a monster songwriter producer. Um, after we recorded "Wishing You the Worst," he passed away, and wow. that devastated me. Um, so not too long ago, I, I released that record. But presently, um, I am right now developing a sort of film production company forward slash music where uh, I will be, you know, with my own YouTube channel, uh, Facebook Live, and even Instagram Live, using the platform to create the Mark Nelson Show. And it's sort of a variety show where I'll have different segments. One is called Man Code. Another one will be a serenade hour. So while I'm literally on the YouTube channel Live and Facebook Live, Ladies could actually call in and request for me to sing them a song right there on the spot, live. Nice. Right? Cool. Thank you. Uh, I also did a deal with um, Rhythm 105.9 up in Sacramento for my radio show called Mark After Dark. Awesome. So basically, nine to midnight, you'll hear this amazing 90s, you know, slow jams. I mean, I'm taking it back where, you know, either you're going to make love to your woman or you're going to fall asleep to it. Whatever you're going to do, you're going to hear some beautiful love records, right? So that'll be through my, um, you know, like I said, my radio station uh, connected with uh, Rhythm 105.9. Um, and yeah, and so while I'm piecing these things together, uh, uh, I got accepted to an extension program for a year with NYU uh, for film. And wow. um, yeah, and it's amazing what I'm learning. It's amazing what I'm learning, all about camera, lighting, pre-production, production, post-production, post editing, all of it. Um, because I think it's so important that even though you can't do everything by yourself, I think it's very important to always do the very best you can to step away from being controlled by anyone when it comes to your creative energy. You know, that's super, super important. You know, make it a way of life to constantly learn, 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 learn your craft and your business at the exact same time. And it's not so much that I'm learning like photography right now that I want to be my DP for my films, but I want to be able to speak his language. Yeah. How can you convey your, your vision to someone if you don't understand their language and they don't understand what you're really trying to say? It's your vision. So I think it's just important to educate yourself. And then lastly, while I'm doing all this, because I'll have these radio platforms, I'll have the, you know, the TV show platform, every month I'm going to release um, a single 
Uh, nice. So I'm going to release I'm going to release two CDs a year, and so therefore each one will have twelve songs. I'm going old school, so you call it CD, <laughs> whatever you want to call it, digital, whatever the hell. <laughs> it's all gravy. Yeah. Uh, but uh, literally every six months, I'll have uh, I'll have music being put out there, and I'm shooting my own music videos with it, and I'm going to shoot like major episodes of serious drama that is connected to each song as I release it every month. Right. That's that's why I'm in film school right now. Wow. Man, yeah. major respect for all that you've got going on and all yeah. that you're doing to better yourself and your career. That's awesome. I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. And you know, let me tell you, man, I appreciate your support over the years, Tom. You, you, your, your, your platform is very, very well received by me and my peers because uh, you, res you respect the culture, you, res you respect the craft, man. I appreciate it. No, absolutely, man. I, I love to, we love to celebrate artists like yourself. I mean, a lot yeah. of, a lot of times in this industry and in this, in this culture, unfortunately, we tend to see people hating on, on someone just because they're not on the radio anymore, but we tend to forget how much good music these artists get, have given us and we yeah, need to celebrate that. It's it. timeless. So artists like I yourself, I love it. to celebrate it. I appreciate it. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Yeah. And I noticed someone's asking me, like, I forget to mention these things. How can you reach me? What is my YouTube channel? Um, so I'm pretty much the letter I, Mark Nelson, everything. Um, my company is called Creative Works, and I spell it C-R-E, the number eight, I-V-E, Creative Works. So you can find me on either I, Mark Nelson, or you just type in Google Creative Works, and you'll be able to find all the things that I'm working on. Yeah. Oh, so next year Mark, is going to be a pretty productive year. There's one more thing I got to ask you about, actually. Because you can ask me anything, bro. I'm here <laughs> I for appreciate you. it. We went through the whole story. And you talked about the trauma you had with, with boys to men early on. And to kind of close the loop, you, you, mm -hmm. you perform with them in, in more recent years. I believe you yeah. said for 10 years. How did yeah, that come together? Years. How was it like getting back with them? You know, how did they even come mm -hmm. together? So um, about, you know, I think it was, um, what was it? Uh, I think that was. Where we, it was, I think it was like 2010. Um, I was having a birthday. Nate called me, wishing me happy birthday. And uh, we were chopping it up. And like, you know, through the conversation, it was just kind of like, yo, let's get back together, you know? Mm. <laughs> and it was like, okay. And then we were like, let's figure out a way to make that happen. Um, and they were just rebuilding their platform as well. Yeah. Uh, and I think they were coming out with the 20, the 20 CD. Um, and I just began hanging out with them, right? And just to kind of get that, that vibe again, that energy again, you know, that connection again. And uh, um the Las Vegas was offering them a residency of their own at the Mirage Hotel and Casino. And that's where we thought it was a great, a great way to get, to get the, the world, because you know, the world comes to Vegas, the world yeah. to seeing four guys again, because we knew that Michael McCurry had not been with them yeah. uh, for some time. And so, um, we did a couple of spot date things. I was there for the premiere of the residency and, and uh, you know, in the studio and just, again, getting that vibe back, you know? Uh, and then we wound up doing um, a celebration for uh, Billy Joel at, uh, at um, Howard Stern. Howard Stern did a tribute to Billy, Billy Joel. Yeah. And, uh, and we wound up, we ended up doing that together. And I think that's when we really could sense the magic because we sang this very old record. If you say the Lord of me tonight. It's like this real, very yeah. older acapella record. Billy Joe was blown away by it. And uh, yeah, man, from that moment forward, it was, it was, uh, it was, you know, so funny when I was saying about the healing coming with Babyface to get with them there were a couple of emotional bumps that needed to be addressed as well, which was a very good thing um, to approach us coming together. Because again, you know, 
we hadn't been together in like God knows how long. And so you can only imagine re-stimulations of the past yeah. would, uh, would resurface. And we addressed them. We addressed them all. And now we're like cool as a fan, you know? So, ah, yeah, man, that's awesome, man. I'm glad it all came full circle for you. Yeah, Things worked you. out yeah. and much deserved. I appreciate that. Thank you. And then, and then last thing I want to get you to speak on, you mentioned the book a bit earlier. You said that's coming next year for those who, who missed it. What can we expect with your book? So, yeah, it's called As a Boy, Yet a Man, um, playing on the names Boys to Men and As Yet, but spelled quite differently. Um, and in the book, it's sort of like memoirs, but, you know, my objective with the book is to is to show the profound amazement and nature of of God and how he never gives you more than you can bear. And you'd be surprised as to how much you can bear. Also to inspire creative people to recognize that it's not about the fame, it's not about the money, it's not about the fortune, it's about being passionate about what you do. And if you're passionate about what you do, you'll always do it and, and it'll be like a, a thirst you can never quench because you love it so much, right? And um, and I can only imagine how many entertainers or, you know, budding entertainers, people who want to make it, are faced with whatever their challenge is. You know, I mean, even though my journey is what it is, I can never say that it's a he it was a heavier burden than someone else's journey. Yeah. You know, and I just want people to know through my book, I never gave up, never quit, never stopped. And uh, and I am the happiest man on the planet, and I have no regrets. And I and I love the journey of 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 the of my of my business. So yeah, and that's what the book will be all about. That's awesome. I look forward to checking that out, man. I've I've enjoyed hearing your story, man. It, it's made me appreciate yeah. you even more. You know, knowing what you've been through. Yeah, thank yeah, you, absolutely. sir. Thank you. I and appreciate so, it. Mark, that's all I got. I just want to thank you again for your time. We're always here to support you, man. I always got your back, and whatever I can do, just let me know. Absolutely, man. You call me anytime, okay? Anytime you Appreciate need. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks, all man. Right. We'll talk again soon. Peace and love. Man. All right, peace.